Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome back to my channel. And what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to show you a comic book haul. Okay, and it's just one comic book and it's a graded comic book. Okay, and this is the, this is what we're going to crack open. It came with, it came in a huge box uh, because um, the person that was selling it was uh, using eBay's global shipping program. So what they end up doing is sending it to a depot in Kentucky and the Kentucky people package it up and then they send it to me because I live outside the United States. And if you remember um, during a previous comic book haul video, uh, when we bought, uh, I bought some Valiant comics and I bought the Quantum and Woody run, uh, the person that was selling those books was going through eBay's global shipping program. And when the package came to me, it was damaged. and. It was horrendous packaging, packaging job from that company, and it cost me an arm and a leg to get it done, right? And I mentioned during that video that I wouldn't be buying any books from anyone selling uh, shipping by Global's eBay shipping program, but I ended up buying this one because um, I've been looking for something like this, and this is special, and this sort of links back to the beginning of uh, sort of me creating content for comic book videos back in 2014 because if you remember when we um, when I started sharing this contest and in the content in the introductory video I mentioned that we're going to overlap a lot of stuff with mathematics and take a look at the uh, you know economics of comics right take a look at investing in comics what how that plays out and take a look at some of the possibly publishing of comic books and some of the other factors involved with, uh, with comic books, specifically relating to mathematics, right? And the first one we're gonna hit up is investing in comic books, right? And this sort of links up to the beginning of that video. And um, during that introduction of video, I sort of mentioned that we're gonna do readings and we've done a whole bunch of readings since then. And I showed you some of my comic book collection and we did some comic book haul videos where we've collected a whole bunch of comics and we, you know, put the stuff into an excel file uh into a spreadsheet and we've you know i have that stuff tabulated so we've got enough data now that we can take some of that information and actually do the mathematics on it and take a look at how prices fluctuate and what happens when you start investing in comic books and what you should look for and what you know how you can calculate growth rates and rate of return and all that jazz right but we get into a lot of that stuff later what i want to do is show you this comic book okay because again this sort of connects back to the beginning and for those of you who've seen some of those earlier videos i think you'll have a really good appreciation for this for this book right and i got it at an amazing price at an amazing price right but before we crack this one open i want to show you my you know handful of graded comics that i have okay and right now they're all cgc but i'm not opposed to um you know, buying uh, books that are graded from other companies, especially the most recent one that came out that was um, one of the people that started CGC. And if I ever end up, at some point I will be sending my books in to be graded. As you know, I've shared some of the, some videos showing my collection. I have, a, I have a nice size collection. There's no way I could afford or I would grade all the books, but there are some books in my collection that I would, um, when the time comes, uh, at some point, uh, I will be selling them, and the odds are the more high-end books I will send in to be graded, and most likely I'll be sending in to a different company that I bought these books for, but I'm open to both. I believe the market should have multiple sources of authenticating uh, comic books. They're great because, you know, just linking it up, talking about mathematics, uh, economics of comics, investing in comics, having comic books graded sort of gives it a certain worth, gives it a certain authentication, right? That you can actually place it uh, in terms of value on a scale system, right? So that's one way that economics plays into investing in comics, right? That's one reason people buy graded comics because there's a lot of people that are buying these comics, not because, you know, they necessarily read the comics books, but what they're doing is they're investing in assets, right? Investing in art that they're hoping that the price will slowly creep up. And we sort of did a um, 
personal finance uh, put a put together some personal finance video and the last one of that we took a look at what the growth rate of you know the most I guess the uh, what's the terminology the the book that everybody's looking for which is the action comics number one the highest value comic book out there as far as I know anyway um, and see you know we took a look at what the graph rate of uh, the growth rate of action comics number one and how that compared to the growth rate of you know income housing stock market s p different types of funds and even cryptocurrencies right so you know there's a lot there and we will be talking a lot about that but i'm going to show you right now before i show you the book we got the haul we got i'm going to show you the graded comics that i have and it's just these ones and back in 2014 i didn't um I didn't have any graded comics, right? And people started asking me about graded comics. And I mentioned that, you know, I'm not really into selling my comics. So I'm not grading them and I'm not buying anything graded because I feel confident enough with my abilities to grade comics to be able to price them on a, you know, or place them on a scale system or price them to a level that I'm satisfied with what I'm paying, right? But if you're, you know, if you haven't handled enough comic books and you don't, you're not comfortable with your grading abilities then graded comic books is one way people are going right had being comfortable with what it is that they're getting so i have one two three four five six seven uh graded comics that i've bought since 2014 and this new one makes it eight okay and initially i wasn't looking into buying graded comics but if we are going to look at the investment uh, aspect of comic books look at the mathematics aspect of that co of comic books i sort of had to get my hands dirty with this i had to buy some of these and take a look at uh, you know specifically some of the grading uh, tick points that they have and take a play around with the website and track some of these some of these books right so i decided uh, to buy my you know start buying some cgc books and uh, let me show you the first two that i bought and let me pull these out and these two that i bought i didn't specifically go out to buy these i bought a comic book a lot uh soon after loading on the first set of videos comic book videos that i put up right so i the first two cgc graded books that i bought came with a whole bunch of other comics so i wasn't necessarily paying for the cgc grading i was buying that lot okay um, and i just wanted to have a feel for how i would feel having graded comic books and it was okay i couldn't crack them open and take a look inside but you know they had their pluses i guess so these are the first two graded comics that i bought uh, and I don't know what the price is for these because they came in a lot. I didn't pay very much for these uh, at all. Okay, so um, this is Doctor Strange number 37 from 1979. Okay, and it's graded at 9. It's, you know, its value is not much. It's, you know, you're basically paying for the grading, the CGC. And it, the grade uh, 9.0 is... For me, if I'm having them um, not graded, that's fine with me. If it's, you know, more than a reading copy, there are definitely books that I have that are graded way less than this, that are, uh, that I would get graded because they're either rare or extremely sought after, right? So that was one of the books. Here's the other one that came with, uh, <laughs> with that lot. I'm happy about this one because I love this. Um, and it's Devil Dinosaur. Jack Kirby created this, and I have. Uh, I don't know if I, I don't think I have the full run, but I do have number one. I got a couple of copies of number one, and this is uh, again. All of these are CGC, and it's CGC nine point four. Again, it's not worth very much. This one, right? Uh, so I bought these soon after uh, loading on comic book uh, haul videos or comic book videos because. I sort of wanted to have a feel for what CGC grading was like, uh, being happy enough having graded comic books. Okay. 
Let me show you the next two that I bought. And these were selling singles. And I bought these because I wanted to buy these because this is one of my favorite characters ever. If not my favorite character. Well, I don't know if I have a few favorite characters in comic books, but this is definitely, uh, I could say at times, my only favorite character in comic books. And I bought Omega Man number three, first appearance of Lobo 9.6. Right, and the second one that I bought specifically, I chased. Look for this, uh, and I bought them. I believe I bought them from the same seller, right? And again, it's <laughs> Omega Man number three, first appearance of the logo, and they're both graded nine point six. And as far as I'm concerned, I bought these because. This is an amazing character. I think it hasn't been treated properly. Uh, it could, this potential is so much, so much more, right? And uh, I would definitely buy more copies of this. Omega Man number three, the first appearance of Lobo. Okay, so these are the first two officially graded comics that I bought uh, specifically looking for them. Right. Let me show you the other three books that I bought that I had been keeping my eyes on them and uh, and my comic book store, uh, my local comic book store had the set, so I bought the set. Okay. And uh, just so you know, the Omega Man number three graded 9.6, both of them I bought for I think around $80 each. Right. So if I recall correctly, I don't have the price on them. Do I have the price? Maybe the price is here. No, the price is not here. But it was around eighty dollars each. Okay. This book, or these three books, I'll tell you the prices because I have the prices. The prices are on them, and I paid a hundred dollars for this. And it's Sandman number one, graded at nine point four. All right, Neil Gaiman. Now, well, if you're going to start off a CGC book collection, Omega Man number three, first appearance of Lobo, and Sandman number one is a pretty good place to start, right? And $100 for uh, Sandman 9.4, graded, uh, not bad, right? The next book, uh, I won't take it out of the plastic, Sandman number two, graded at 9.4, and I paid 50 bucks for this one, and it's a good price great price okay. and as I said this is a set right and the third or I guess the fifth actual graded comic that I bought uh, intentionally for buying it for this uh, because I love these books is Satman number three CGC graded at 9.6 for $40 and by the way these the Omega Man were US price. I think it was like 70 or $80 US. These prices for the Sandman books, Canadian prices, right? Fantastic deal. Fantastic deal, really. To send a book to CGC to great, great, get graded costs around $30 US, right? And you're not guaranteed to get back a 9.6. And I do have this run. I don't, I don't know if, I don't think I have the full Sandman run and I haven't finished all of Sandman. I've got to like three quarters of the way through and you know life circumstances i stop reading uh, but at some point when i do decide to read sandman finish it off i'm going to go back to the beginning and read the whole thing again right and if you've never read sandman highly highly recommend reading sandman okay so those are my cgc graded books so far and i just added one more to them okay and let me show you what that one is. Let me put these things on one side. Okay. And bring this guy out. And again, this is, I'll say it again. Uh, the odds are I'll never buy from any seller again if they're using eBay's global shipping program. Uh, but never say never, because if the right book comes up and if the price is right, uh, it's, uh, 
I wait, I, you know, I'd be willing to pay the extra price for having the shipping to get it. And let me show you what this is. Let's see how they package this one up. The last one I got from these people that shipped it, it was brutal. So they got it in a whole bunch of this kind of filler. Right. Here's what they have it in. So it's not bad, it's loose, but And they have the, and they have the receipt here. And uh, here, let me show you what I paid for this. <laughs> I don't want to do any reveals here yet, but take a look. I paid fifty-nine dollars for this, right, U.S. And the shipping for it cost me uh, shipping and duty um, together cost me like twenty twenty-five bucks. So it kicked up the price. Okay. Um, but I paid $59 for this. And this is graded at, let me show you. This is graded at 5.5. And I've bought ungraded copies of this. And I have two copies of this already. And you would have seen what it is. And the book I'm about to show you is the book that we did the first reading for when we started this whole comic book playlist. Okay, after my introduction video, this is what we read, and it's Mystic Number Six, six Basil Wolverton's Eye of Doom, right? And I have two copies of this already, and they're great, they're low grade, they're graded at around, I would give them a grade anywhere between two to three, right? Two and a half, two, two and a half, right? And I paid more for those ungraded copies, I paid. I bought those for about 80 bucks a pop, right? 75, 80 bucks a pop, right? I think including shipping, maybe not, but shipping wasn't as much as this. So I bought those for $80. And this one, I hope it's, it's graded at 5.5, mystic number six. Nice. and it's a fantastic story if you want to have read through it take a look at that video and uh, let me take it out of the plastic this is scanned by buying CGC books or graded comic books and when that slid a thing changed the cover and stuff like this but the cover of this is very good there's no dents or scratches so I do check the covers um, buying CGC right? and what I did uh, for buying this uh, I try to track it track down the number you can look up the number here go to their website and make sure that this is a group one of the graded copies right so this is officially i guess the seventh book i have graded comic book i have in my collection and i can't believe i got it for well 60 dollars around the 25 dollars so i got it for 85 bucks that including the shipping right um i paid that much for a two ungraded basically two and a half ungraded uh, and this is on my radar all the always really i've seen some of the ones selling on ebay and an ungraded copy like a two sells for you know it sells sells for you know it varies on the seller the prices fluctuate one i saw that didn't even have the cover on it was selling for around 80 dollars um, as far as value wise goes uh, my budget was low so i would i did a 
what do you call it, uh, Hail Mary or throw caution to the wind and, uh, and a whole bunch of other sayings in different languages. I, I figured I'd try my luck and I placed a bid on this and my bid was higher than what it actually cost me, but it was nowhere as high as what I think this book is worth. And I've talked to some people, I've you know mentioned that I wouldn't sell this book not even close to what I paid for it. I think one person I mentioned that I wouldn't, you know, the price I would pay for this book is because if I had the money, right? But I didn't have the money and I'm happy to have it for 60 bucks or 80 bucks, right? So Mystic number six, Basil Warburton, graded at 5.5. Um, and this sort of takes us back to the beginning of this whole thing of uh, comic books. Wow, this is a great book. I'm very happy to have this. Very happy to have this. And it's got, what does it say? Off white to white, white pages. Uh, Basil Wolverton, Manny Stallman, and Vernon Henkel Art. And we haven't read, the, we just read the first story. We read this one, right? The Eye of Doom. We didn't read uh, The Old Lady's Son. <laughs> what is nothing and other mystifying terrors and I flipped and I rewatched uh, the video that we made of this the reading the whole thing uh, just flipping through it um, just to get a feel for what it is that I bought again right because uh, I love the book and I'm so happy to have this and I would definitely buy it's like Lobo Omega Man number three there's certain uh, when it comes to collecting comic books they're collectors that have a certain preference sometimes to a certain issue to a certain series to a certain artist there's some people that just collect certain writers or certain artists or certain series right for me i have multiple loves and I have there's certain comics that i have that I have multiple issues of and i continue to buy certain uh for certain issues for certain characters i buy multiple copies of certain things right uh it's sort of on the mindset of, of investing to a certain degree, um, just like any stock you buy, right? If you're in the markets or whatnot, if you think the company is going to be worth more down the road, then you can invest in it at a certain time and continue to build your assets regarding that. And there's a lot of people to do that, right? There's a lot of people have done that with many different characters, right? I've talked to a lot of people that were buying, you know, the first appearance of Thanos uh, back in the day or, People buying Omega Man, as you can guess, uh, these are the only copies of Omega Man number three that I have, right? They're the only graded copies of Omega Man number three that I have, but they're not the only copies of Omega Man number three that I have, right? And Mystic number six, this isn't the only copy I have. I have two very low grade ones, and I will continue to keep my eyes out, eyes out for this, right? So that's one thing to consider as well. Um, you can focus if you're investing or buying into comic books if you like something you can just focus in a narrower level in a certain style in a certain comic books in a certain year right in a certain era and just collect either golden age silver age bronze modern age if you want you could cl collect just variants if you want right doesn't make a difference doesn't make a difference as long as you love what you do right and i'm very happy to get this very very happy to get this i can't believe i got this <laughs> and this is just uh, I just just if you want to know uh, if you're into graded comics I went on the website and punched in this number and it matches this this comic right and there are only seven graded mystic number six in the database they might be more I don't know how the logist of it, logistics of it works as when it comes to grading I'm for some reason I don't think I don't know about the other grading companies, but I don't think CGC automatically, uh, they must automatically put it into their database to keep a record of what they've graded and what's there. But based on the website, based on the information, there's only seven graded Mystic number six out there. Okay. And this is, I think, the fourth highest graded or in the middle with seven, you know, the range. <laughs> whatever you have it's one of seven right and this is sort of in the middle okay fantastic fantastic and if you guys are curious uh, in a previous video I showed you I did a rotation out of uh, 
the framed comics that I have. And I didn't show you this one because I framed this. I mentioned that I got the bug for framing some of my other comics and I have some more frames like this. And I just recently framed this one, okay? So we can add this one to the framed comics collection. And I, this is underdog number one, the first appearance of underdog. And the reason I framed this one sort of in, uh, in honor of them uh, finding new unpublished material from that period I think from the 1970s or 1960s that uh, 1970s uh, that never got printed never got published and they're releasing that I think either in a couple of months I think it's the, in the most recent preview so I thought I'd put this up in there and uh, Mighty Mouse who doesn't love Mighty Mouse right so this is another one of the frame comics that I have now that I think I'll be keeping up for a while okay and mystic number six fantastic fantastic so i think we've got enough um, data i might collect a little bit more along the way uh, so we can do an analysis on the economics of investing in comics um, but that's sort of uh, if you're curious uh, that's sort of the direction i'm going uh, and one thing one concept that really plays well into this right now for me being able to buy this at uh, a ridiculous price of sixty dollars, let's say eighty-five dollars, including shipping, is the concept of liquidity, right? Which is something we talked about when it came to personal finance, where we looked at how automation came into play in the stock market, and the first, not the first time, but one of the times, like even the two thousand and um, nineteen twenty-nine mar stock market crash and nineteen eighty stock market crash, eighty-seven stock market crash specifically the article we talked about um, with automation kicking in into high frequency the you know the beginning of high frequency trading we read a little excerpt on what happens when liquidity disappears from a market right and more obscure things that you invest in like most likely assets like this right um, if the market can't handle it all of a sudden liquidity drops and the prices drop so you know, this is a very good example of liquidity sort of being very dependent on the, mar on the market, sort of not absorbing all the, I guess, comic books out there and liquidity dropping and the price dropping. So if you're able to take advantage of a situation like that when it comes to investing in any type of market, then you can get amazing deals on certain things and as long as you don't need that you don't need to liquidate that asset or you don't need the funds to maintain your life right then usually you can you know get into the game uh, during those periods right but we'll talk a lot more about that i'm sort of going off on tangents sort of I guess you can consider this to be a primer on investing in comics, right? But we'll do a full introduction on the concept of mathematics of uh, comic books and economics of comic books in the future. Okay. That's it for now. I'll see you guys in the next video. guy as well. Right. Fun. 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 Bye for now.